This is him. You know what he said, like, uh, goat? Hey, can everybody watch Papa Michael taste the first time we ever ate ham? Let's see. Can you taste the ham? Don't do it, Michael. Don't eat the ham. She definitely poisoned the ham. Oh, it's over. After many long years, the moment has finally come. Michael is in America with Angela. It's like the end of The Truman Show when Jim Carrey finally leaves the dome, but instead of a life of opportunity and freedom, it's just Angela standing there ready to burn him with a cigarette. It turns out things don't just magically get better with their relationship because he's in America now. It doesn't work like that. You could go to therapy or work on your communication, or you could hire a private investigator for the second time in a relationship. How do you do that a second time? Have they even gone to couples therapy before? How do you go through two private investigators and zero therapists. So anyway, Angela and Michael have come home together for the first time, and she's looking forward to surprising her daughter and grandchildren. Lead. Come on. Ah. Ah. You've been gone for way too long. Half the time, I swear, I don't even know what she's saying. All I hear is, <laughs> When I think of Angela, this is what pops into my head. Nobody knows Michael's coming to the U.S., not the grandkids, not Skyla. And the reason I want it like that, because I want it to be a surprise for the grandkids. So when Michael knocks on the door, I mean, I want to see the grandkids, because that's going to be beautiful, but Skyla's face. Oh yeah, so one of Angela's main motivations to bring Michael here was to rub it in her daughter's face that she's actually doing it. So that's a good reason. Like, who cares? Just bringing him here, that doesn't prove anything. You actually have to live together. She also seems to think at times that her daughter is, like, jealous of her and that she wants Michael. They have a really weird dynamic. He's gonna get that visa. You keep thinking he ain't. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. I can't wait to prove you wrong that he's gonna get that visa. He's coming, ain't he, Anna? So while this conversation is happening inside, Michael is just sitting out in the car. Angela is leaving him quite a lot of opportunities to just take off. I'm sure he's just sitting there contemplating what he just did. The door is right there, Michael. You could take off in any direction. Just get as far as you can before sunrise. That way you can ensure you'll be as safe as possible. So at this point, Michael probably assumed that Angela forgot about him and he just went inside anyway. Finally, we get to see this big happy family moment and Angela is just screaming really loudly, of course. Holy The new Jojo Siwa song sounds lit. <laughs> Whose pop is that? <laughs> no, baby, that's my husband. <laughs> yeah, it is. No one's disputing yeah. that. You happy? If you haven't been able to tell, this is all for show. Angela just wants to put Michael on display to be like, look, everything's fine, everything's great, I'm not about to investigate anybody, and we're good. I didn't smash his phone, we didn't almost break up, and I, I haven't threatened to put a cigarette out on anybody. Not even once. That's fine. We're giving your daddy a hug! I just love this! I give you a five. I'm just playing. Give me a hug. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. I am shocked your mama's acting good, y'all! All right, can you be quiet? Can can you ever just be quiet? Do you have to be a part of everything? Can two other people speak, please? It's like if two other people are talking, she can't help herself but just shout catchphrases and shit in the background. So they go into Angela's room, and of course, everything is a total mess. She didn't prepare for him to come here at all, which it just shows that she didn't expect him to come here at all. And of course, she thinks it's like all funny and charming, like, oh my god, Michael, I can't believe I left it like this. Honestly, it's not even as bad as I expected it to be, considering what she can do to a hotel room in less than a day. The amount of time she's gone to Nigeria and just destroyed a hotel room, at this point they probably have a crew ready every time she shows up. And I'm sure their families are like, you gotta get out of that job, man. It's dangerous. One of these days you're gonna end up seriously hurt or dead. I just had to come get to you quickly for the visa, so I just pulling out. Oh, I'm sure that's why. I mean, yeah. the bed. You see it's made now, but all these stuffed animals are Marley's. Oh, damn it, Marley. And this. then you see all the stuffed animals over there. I think she was laying here waiting for me to get home today. Is she blaming one of her granddaughters for her own mess? This is so embarrassing. I'm really sorry for the six stuffed animals inside of this room full of 18,000 articles of clothing. I can't believe what Skyla did to this room. You know what, Skyla? Skyla, is this your Mountain Dew? Oh my God. <laughs> why everywhere is clothes, clothes, and where am I going to put my things? I've been in hotel many times with my wife, but I never realized it was this messy. 
All right, well, I am really not sure how he wasn't able to figure that out yet, even just staying in hotel rooms with her. If they had walked into that room and everything was completely neat and organized, I would have told you that there was no way she was behind that. It's funny that the happiest moment of their relationship was the moment that Michael stepped through the door and she could finally rub it in her daughter's face that he's here. But after that, everything is just downhill because reality is about to set in. Turns out you can't just scream and grunt your way through a relationship. You actually have to do stuff. Now that Michael's in the U.S., I'm hoping it's better for our life, but uh, not tonight. <laughs> I am exhausted. <laughs> What is that? Is that a was that a real sound? What genre of sound is that? Is that a laugh? Oh no, it's the sound that that dinosaur made in Jurassic Park right before he sprayed the acid at Newman. So next, Angela and Michael go out for a night on the town, and by night on the town, I mean they go to a gnarly restaurant that her friend owns, and they spit on the wall. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, like that's actually what ends up happening. This is their idea of a romantic night out the first time that he moves to America. Oh Michael, I may hate you, but I love you, and we're eating good tonight. We're gonna go have dinner with Skyla, and I just know Skyla's gonna talk about how I shouldn't brought Michael here because I can't trust him. Is Skyla gonna talk about that, or are you gonna talk about that and then get mad when she comments on it? I love this is my favorite place to eat. Oh, oh hey, come on, have a seat. <laughs> Can I have a hug? Hello, mother. Hello, daughter. Say hello to your stepdaddy. <sighs> hey, Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back off, Skyla. I don't want your man, mother. I can't tell. Oh my God. You better back off, Skylar, because that is my man, and those are my ribs. I'm excited for you to see this menu. Chicken fingers. Chicken fingers? Yeah, chicken fingers. No. Yes, yes. Why yeah. don't you try the shrimp and grits? Shrimp and grits. Yes. Chicken fingers. No. Angela, I think the guy just wants some chicken fingers. So I'm not sure if the food here is actually that bad or if Michael just doesn't like this kind of food. But either way, it's hilarious. And if you go back to when Angela first tried food from his country, she was pretty skeptical as well and wasn't that respectful. She spit it out into a napkin pretty much immediately. You're gonna love it. Listen, this is real food. It's not like back at home, the freaking hooves, the big old snails. It's ribs, steak, greens, my food back home is also real. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's the irony, is literally speaking, it probably is less real here. I think it's kind of funny when everybody on this show thinks that people from other countries are gonna be completely blown away when they try American food. Like, we, we do have good food here, don't get me wrong. It's definitely not everywhere. Like, it's you have to find it, but it's out there. But either way, she doesn't seem to understand that the food from his country was as different to her as this food is to him. You didn't automatically like that food. In fact, it sounds like you still don't, so why would you expect him to automatically like this food. This is nice. I think so. What do you think, baby? Yeah. I'm feeling good. So good? <clears throat> I mean... I actually never thought she was gonna come. Uh-oh. Why? Never. Really, Skyla? Really? How could you possibly think that? Why would you think he would never come over? I'm really trying to rack my mind here, and I can't think of one thing over the last seven years that would cause you to feel this way. In fact, I am hurt. I'm very hurt. I was gonna share this rib with Michael, but I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I can anymore. What are you doing? I'm, I'm, te I'm testing you. You're smelling. Yeah. I'm sure that Michael is surprised to finally be here in America, and I'm sure that he's also skeptical of when Angela is gonna decide to poison him. What are you doing? Are hey, you a Michael? Cat? I want to see if, if it's real. I don't want to waste it. You're even freaking me out, Michael. So I'm not sure if he's trying to be disrespectful or weird on purpose, and I was just kind of joking about the poison thing until now it's sort of looking like maybe he's testing it. Either way, I could be wrong, but I thought like licking your food first is probably universally disrespectful. Are there some places where that's normal? I don't know. All I do know is this is hilarious. I mean, it's not nasty, right? What is this? Blood. Mmm, that's ribs. Remember I kept telling you about hog? That's hog. Oh. Okay. You know, pig? Did you just spit on there? There's no spit. So I'm not exactly sure what Michael just did, but it looks like he spit out a tiny little crumb or something. But either way, I don't think he was spitting it out to be rude or to show that he was disgusted with the food or anything. However, Angela saw something entirely different, and she is deeply offended by what Michael has done to her good friend's food. You're sitting here denying. I'm not denying. You spit it. Stop lying. Let me show you what you do. 
That's what you, you did. No, no, he's that's what you just did to his wall. Yes, that's what he did. Those are the exact same things. So let me get this straight. She was saying it's disrespectful that Michael spit on the wall. So her response is to spit way more food at her husband, which is infinitely more disrespectful. I mean, she spit a pretty good hunk of rib at him. That's about as trashy as it gets. I mean, that's just disrespectful to everybody. It's disrespectful to her friend. It's disrespectful to Michael. It's crazy how quick she is to jump to conclusions. Like instead of hearing him explain things, she just spits on him. Don't tell me that one spit. That was rude. Excuse me, Skyla. That was rude. Yes, Angela, you're so right. So Angela storms out and goes to have her post-argument cigarette, as always. That rib that she spit on Michael probably fell on the floor, and I doubt she was the one to pick it up. Imagine being told by Angela that you're being rude or disrespectful, and then she proceeds to spit on her husband and storm out. Seeing Michael spit something out of his mouth at this restaurant. I was like, what did he just do? This is a nice restaurant. That pissed me off. Yeah, if it's a nice restaurant, then why are you spitting large hunks of food on people? I don't think anybody else would have even noticed what Michael did. Like, I doubt her friend is that offended by what Michael did. If anything, he's now, he's now pissed that she made a huge scene and she's scaring away all the other customers. I'm sure there's people shielding their children as she walks by. Babe? I'm all right now, you just really upset me, sorry. No, I apologize for it's that. It's okay, I'm okay. sorry. Wow, that might be the first time I've heard her it's apologize. Okay. It, that was just rude. Sorry. All right, well, at least she has some sense. I'm sure she went outside and was thinking, all right, how can I be the one mad here if I'm spitting on people? She also talks to him like she's scolding a child, which is even more terrifying because she actually takes care of her grandchildren. Is this her, is this her parenting technique? So next, they're all having Christmas dinner together and somehow the topic of Michael's phone gets brought up and he reveals that Angela actually destroyed it and that's why he doesn't have a phone right now. So of course, Angela's daughter, Skyla, is like, well, what's the deal with that? Why, why did you smash his phone. I thought everything was great. Typically, you don't smash people's phones if your relationship is good. Michael, what was what was Christmas like in Nigeria? We cook uh, jollof rice. Is America different from Nigeria? No, it's the exact same. Uh, absolutely. Really? He's like, what is she talking about? Am I mishearing what she's asking? Like, I'm pretty sure he thinks that he's hearing the question wrong because it's that ridiculous. I love how Angela's granddaughter asks an actual question. Like, what is Christmas like in Nigeria? I'm actually interested to know. And then Skyla jumps in and she's like, is it any different there than it is here? I've always wondered if it's different in other countries than it is here or if everything's just the same. The craziest part is not only does she ask that question, but she seems surprised when he says things are different. I ain't seen you take pictures or anything. Most if I go to Nigeria, I'm taking about 100 pictures. You ain't took not one since you've been here. Uh, because I don't have a phone. What happened to your phone? Uh, my phone got broken before we came to the States. Oh, interesting. How'd that happen? Tell me more. So this is about to open up a whole can of worms. I mean, even just asking why she smashed his phone, there's there's way too many things to explain. I don't even think I can explain it because I have no idea what really happened. Obviously, Michael is lying about some things, but Angela isn't exactly onto the truth either. So I, I don't know what's going on. I guess Michael was part of some online group that helps Nigerian men meet American women, but I have no idea why he was part of this or what he was doing. And something to do with the money that she was sending him, she's questioning him on what he did with that money. I don't know the truth of any of this. It's not, it's not good, I know that. Me mom broke the phone. Me mom broke the phone after we had a little disagreement. That's the honest truth. Michael, why would you say that? Now I'm off to break something else. It's like she thinks that breaking the phone will solve the problem. Like, there you go, it's all good now. They never get to the root of anything. All she does is run around and break stuff while listening to Limp Biscuits break stuff. That's literally Angela's theme song right there. What happened was, he was supposed to delete the Paradise Men, that he was an administrator, and I went to go in the kitchen, was having a good time, and it popped up, ding, 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 and I said, what the f have they deleted? Oh my God, he's not gonna delete it. He's never gonna delete it. When are you gonna learn this? He's not gonna delete anything you ask him to delete. He, he said the only way he would delete his Instagram is if you gave him $5,000. Imagine saying that to your wife. That just shows the type of relationship they have, and it also shows how bad Angela is if Michael is still the one that everybody sympathizes with. I said, now, paradise that bitch. So do you think destroying the phone solved the problem? That was all your evidence you had on there. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Angela is like the Incredible Hulk. She loses control and just starts smashing things. She lives her life as if this actually does something. Like if Michael's doing something you don't like, you go over and rip off the windshield wiper to his car. That ought to teach him. So before we know it, Angela is talking to a private investigator once again. We have come full circle. The saddest circle of all time. And they're just gonna tell her the same thing that they've always told her. Like, who is this guy? What is he actually gonna do? His name is Todd. What's he gonna do? The obvious million dollar question is whether or not he has scammed Angela. Obviously, it's too early for me to say that right now, but we'll find out soon enough. Oh, no, you won't. Well, That's the thing is, so often, even when they do prove something, the person just doesn't want to believe it. So what was the point in hiring the private investigator? This whole scene is incredibly pointless, but it leads right into the tell-all, which we'll be discussing another time. I honestly didn't even expect these two to last as long as they have this season, but they might just have one of those toxic relationships that's basically impossible to separate at this point, especially at, at the point that she is in her life. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more content, you can head on over to Patreon, where I've been recapping Jersey Shore. But yeah, I hope everybody has a wonderful week and I will see you next time. This is him. You know what he's saying? Like, go. No, this is hog. Chicken fingers. Hey, can everybody watch what Michael taste the first time he ever ate ham? Chicken fingers. No. This is him. Chicken fingers.